Wow, are you seriously beyond any help now? What the hell is this crap in my lunchbox? What is it this time? You asked for meat, so I made you some fried chicken for lunch today. You just put the leftovers from yesterday's dinner in here. I made sure to fry them once more for that crispy texture, and I added a different spice to give them a fresh flavor, not like yesterday's. I thought having this much variation in our foods would make you less likely to get tired of eating what I cook. I couldn't care less about your spices. What really matters to me is that most people I know actually have a life and go out for lunch. Instead of wasting their time with all this pathetic, bring your own lunch to work nonsense. Well, then I guess I shouldn't make you lunch anymore. It'd be easier and way more relaxing if you just went out for lunch as well. Well, I don't want to do that either. Why not? Because all of the well-respected guys here have their wife make them lunch every day. I don't think having lunch made for them by their wives make much of a difference in how they appear to everyone else. But, well then, are you saying that everyone that goes out for lunch isn't respected there? Don't try and bring up a different issue right now. What I want to talk about has nothing to do with that. I just want to be respected around my workplace. And I'm always being told to do my best in all aspects of my life. That includes what my wife cooks for me to bring to work the next day for lunch. Well, anyways, I'm going to be late coming home from work today. Oh, are you going out for dinner with some of your co-workers? You got it. We're throwing a little welcome party for this stunning new girl who just joined our team. We're heading to one of the restaurants up north to celebrate. Well, that sounds nice. What? Are you getting jealous that I will be spending my night around someone that isn't you? <laughs> huh? No, not at all. I just want you to have a fun night out is all. Jeez, that's one of the reasons why you fall short of being even a halfway decent wife for me. I just wish you'd show a bit more jealousy when I mention spending time around other women. I'm sorry, but it's not like it'll just be the two of you going out for dinner. Your company will always be having a welcome party for her. So I just assumed that it would be business related and nothing personal. You want to make a good first impression on behalf of the company for her, right? Hmm. <laughs> I already knew that, so stop trying to lecture me. And since I'll be out late, I expect you to be waiting at home for me with a hint of worry and jealousy on your face, instead of dozing off like always. Seriously? Well, what time do you think you'll be home tonight? Do you think I'd know? I'll be home when I am home, and you better be ready for me to get in bed with you. I guess I can wait for you all night. It's part of what will make me like you more, so you better. And anyways, you're always alone at home. Who knows if you'd sleep all day before I get home. But I have all sorts of housework that needs to get done, so I don't have time to just sit around and sleep all day. Oh, shut up. Maybe you should try getting a real job outside the house and see how you handle it. Unlike you, I don't waste my time napping before heading out for the night, do I? Then I guess I'll try and get a part-time job. Since you seem to be alright with that. I never said I'd allow that. People will start to think that I can't provide for the two of us. I'll become a laughing stock at work. Then, if you don't want me to work a job outside of the house, don't start judging my work in the house. Whatever. Just make sure that you continue to do your boring job at our house so that I don't need to hire someone else to take your place. Okay. I'm sorry about falling asleep before you got home last night. I didn't think you'd be out past midnight, and I couldn't keep my eyes open waiting for you. So, you finally decided to wake up. You lazy pig. Are you still driving to work? Yes. Then what time did you end up getting home last night from the dinner? At around 2 a.m. That's super late. Coming home early in the morning from a work dinner like that? Well, I was having too much fun with my co-workers. After the dinner, we all decided to head to a few other bars, including that beautiful new girl that joined our department. I guess I shouldn't be upset with you for having fun. I'm really sorry for falling asleep early. I thought you'd come out and meet everyone at the restaurant. I wanted to show you off to all those people and maybe score some brownie points from my colleagues for being with you. But no, you'd rather snooze away and not bother supporting your husband's desires. So, as a way to teach you a lesson, I took the liberty of paying for everyone's final round of drinks using your debit card. What? 
but I would have never left the house to see you guys late at night anyway. And even if I would have wanted to drive out that far that late at night, I had already fallen asleep by accident. Are you trying to give me more excuses again? Or make me feel bad for you? Well, don't bother trying to dampen my spirits because I will be out late again tonight. So tonight, I'd better return home to you awake and ready to please me. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. And you'll be home late again? It's because you messed up last night. This is another form of punishing you since you have to always think about yourself. We decided to have another night out tonight at the bar. So make sure you stay awake. And you might want to act a little worried because it looks like that new girl is starting to take an interest in me. <laughs> really? What? Does a failure like you have something they want to say to me? Well, can you at least give me a ballpark time of when you'll be home tonight? Well, how about this? I'll be home when I feel like it. And by the way, just because you'll be staying up late tonight doesn't mean that you get to slack off on getting housework done today. Can I at least be allowed to take a nap during the afternoon? That way I'll have more energy going into the night. No? Why do you think it's okay for you to sleep like a pig while I'm here working my butt off? Doing something like that will only irritate me further. It's unfair to me. But you coming home late at night doesn't have to do with you being at work, right? Tonight will be a completely separate thing from work this time. Stop coming at me with all these questions. Well, I need to sleep or else I won't be able to make it through the next day without collapsing. And then the chores will definitely go without being finished. But wait. When you were staying out late after work, are you driving yourself home every time? Isn't that obvious? Does that mean... Of course. I am using your savings to fill my tank on the way home. What the hell? But where are you going to eat is an hour away from our house. Do you know how expensive that becomes with how gas prices are these days? Maybe you can start carpooling. You should start looking into that. Now that the cost of gas will be affecting you instead of me. <laughs> and I don't think any of us want to carpool when we all live in completely different areas from each other. Then I only want one thing from you. Please come home early. I have to go to sleep at some point. If you are able to start doing as I ask of you, then I might stop paying for everything using your money. Ha! Huh. Doing everything you ask? I am not going to tell you any more than that. I'm really sorry. Well, you can prove that you're sorry by doing what I ask. But wait, please wait. You shouldn't be thinking of me this way. I'm your wife. Hey, can you try and get home a little earlier today, please? What? Are you already starting to give up? <laughs> Each day, you keep using more and more of my money to pay for gas and such. All of my savings are starting to dry up. It looks like you keep driving farther and more often to all sorts of places every day. And if you keep this up for another few weeks, I'll be out of money. Well then, maybe it is time you start complaining and keep up with what I want from you. I also don't want to hear you questioning what I'm doing or where I'm going. Why not? I know this is pretty far out there, but you're not going out with another woman, are you? Why would you ask me that? Did you find something out from someone? Huh. Wait. What are you saying? Are you actually cheating on me with other girls? <laughs> I am. What's wrong? Do you not see how poorly you treat me all of the time? I just thought if you couldn't handle all of my needs, maybe it was time I find another girl to pick up your slack. Huh. <sighs> I can't believe you're actually cheating on me. It's not like this should even bother you. I still return back home to you when I'm finished anyways. Why do you keep trying to make it seem like what you're doing and saying to me is okay? Do you not know what you're doing is crazy wrong? Well, I was hoping I could have gotten away with this a little longer, but... Oh well. What the hell? You're the worst. What? Do you want to get divorced then? Then let's do it. Whenever you're ready. I have been waiting for this moment to happen for a while now. But wait, I think you will find that life without me is worse than it is with me. You rely 100% on me being your husband, since you don't have a job of your own. So what will an unemployed you do after you leave me? What can you do? 
even if I don't have you anymore, I can still get a divorce settlement and I'll sue you for all the money you spent going out with your mistress. That was my savings. Then, do you have any evidence of me doing anything wrong? All I have said is that I have been cheating. But that is only through a text message. You don't have any proof. I could just be saying that to get you upset with me. So don't come at me saying you'll get a settlement from me and all this bullcrap. I'm starting to break down thinking about how much of my life I've been throwing away for you. All the times I had to sacrifice my own time and money for you. Well, now that you know about this, I'm alright with you going to bed before I get home. But I'm still going to use your savings for gas. I would still rather you be awake when I get home so that I can have a round two. <laughs> Hey, there is a notification in the mail that came today saying that our divorce papers have arrived at the city office. What's up with this? When did you decide you were going to fill those papers out? And does this mean we are officially divorced? Just shut up. Yes, it does. Why did you go ahead and fill out the paperwork without me? Who filled in my part of the paperwork for me? The girl I'm having an affair with filled in your part. Ha 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 ha. And do you think that I'll be okay with you guys doing that? Do you think the law will be okay with it? You don't have any evidence saying that she filled it in for you, right? Besides, you're already too late at this point. No matter what you try and do, those papers have already arrived at the city office. And no matter what you say to anyone, I have already burned through all of your savings. So there is no money for you to get yourself a lawyer now. I pity having to throw you out onto the streets without a penny in your pockets. But in the end, you were only ever my slave. I never truly loved you as a person. <laughs> you are really crossing the line. Hey, I have only one thing to ask. Oh, what could that be? Who is the girl that you have been having an affair with this whole time? What the heck? Can't seem to get over me? You're so pathetic, Sabrina. It's a girl that I work with. Do you remember Deborah? Deborah? Oh no. She was the one that came to our wedding and she gave that lovely speech before our wedding vows, right? Wow, you remember everything about her. Someone like you doesn't even hold a candle to how amazing she is. I shouldn't be having to question this. But have you guys been close to each other like that even before our wedding happened? We were. Is that a problem? There are all sorts of problems with that. Why did you even bother marrying me then, if you knew you had feelings for her? Because when we first started dating, you had always talked about how nice life after marriage would be. And I knew you'd do all of the housework while I was out after we moved in together. So I saw you as a good tool for a while. But the life that I wanted after marriage wasn't supposed to be me acting as your pet. Well, that's too bad for you then, huh? You wanted to get married. So I did that for you. You should be grateful for what I gave you. You're right. So, you agree? Then you can start gathering your things and get to getting out of my house. I want Deborah to be moved in by the next week so that we can get to making a few kids. <laughs> what about you? Will you go crying back to your parents' house? That's all I can afford to do at the moment. All right. Well, good luck. Hey, pick up the damn phone when I call you. What do you still want from me? What is this letter in the mail stating that you took legal action against me? Ah, so it finally arrived. I see. Perfect. <laughs> what the hell is up with this? Like I said before, filling out and sending in divorce papers without the consent of both parties is illegal. Now the police want to have a word with you about it. The police? They told me that they would need to talk to you before this could move forward, so good luck. This is all just a sick joke, right? How the hell could that have been illegal? It was just a simple divorce paper. You committed the crime of sending in an official document with four signatures misrepresenting me. So what will happen to me now, though? Well, you'll be put in prison for a few years and will have to pay five grand in fines, I think. But that's all up to the judge to decide. What the... But there's still more. Deborah may also need to go to prison for the same crimes as you, since she helped fill out my half of the form and forged my signature. 
But if the two of you want to know more in-depth stuff about this, I'd say you can Google it all yourselves. We'll go to prison? Well, it looks that way to me. But like I said, you might be lucky enough to be slapped with a heavy fine. And from the looks of it, you and Deborah got married already, right? And what about that? I think you'll both be charged with bigamy, as well since we didn't officially divorce yet. <laughs> but we did get divorced. It was all finalized. I think you need to think about this for a long second. Really, no matter what happens with the divorce, you'll be stuck committing a crime. Because if the divorce papers are revoked, then you'll definitely be committing bigamy for marrying two people. And if they go through with processing the divorce papers, you'll both be charged with forgery of an official document and for misrepresenting me. Then what happens if I go with committing bigamy? Depending on what the court decides, you could be going to prison for a few years as well. Even if you get a good lawyer, I think you'll be seen as a criminal for doing this. And it will all go onto your permanent record. Do you think that will really happen? Well, I don't know what your outcome will be, but... But no matter what it is, I'm sure I'll be fine calling it my revenge. And a good one at that. I had actually been thinking of this day for a long time now, but never wanted to say anything to you until it was 100% in motion. What else do you plan to do to me? Well, first, I'm going to open another case trying to get those divorce papers that you sent in and validated. But while that happens, I'll work with my lawyer to start filling out paperwork in which I can also ask for a court settlement for you and Deborah for financial abuse and theft. My lawyer said it's no problem. What is going on? Who is this lawyer? How did you hire someone? I thought you didn't have any money. Well, I have friends and family who are willing to help. And once I got the settlement money from you too, I could pay them back. I didn't expect that from someone as stupid as you. I used a lot of money not getting the divorce validated, but also having an official documentation made up with the lawyer, allowing me to get a court settlement from you guys. That's unfair. Then, do you want to take this to court and try and fight me over it? If we go there, we won't be able to get the divorce fully processed, and then you will ultimately be tried for bigamy in court. You won't have to pay me a settlement for the divorce, but you will be going to prison. Damn. But if you'd rather us not go through all of that, then maybe you can give me a settlement out of court. You want me to give you money for that as well? Well, either way, you'll most likely need to go to prison for a few years. Well, you might get lucky though. The judge might just suspend your sentence and allow you to go on probation for however many years he finds fit. Alright, let's just forget about all of this. Let's just cancel the divorce. What? I'll divorce Deborah, and then we can get back together again and fix all of this fighting. This time, I'll make sure to treat you with respect you deserve. Heck, I'll even start cooking for you if that will make you feel better. You'll only do all that to get yourself out of jail, literally. I know you'll just go back to treating me like crap anyways. No, please let me treat you better than I did before. You're already a little too late there. I'm already far too excited about seeing what happens next to you. So don't bother trying to please me. If you really want to treat me with respect you say I deserve, then you need to pay me back for all my savings that you spent. You'll also need to pay for the court settlements and the out-of-court settlements that I asked for. I'd like it all in one lump sum payment as well. A lump sum? You bastard! Look, I'm sorry, okay? Please forgive me and stop all of this from happening. I think we're beyond simple interactions like that. Well, there was one more thing that I was forgetting. I decided it was a good idea to send all of that evidence that I got of your affair to your bosses. What? What have you done? I know, that's pretty awful, right? I even was able to send those to your wedding planner as well. I guess if you're planning to still have that wedding, you might want to make it just the two of you instead. <laughs> Man, I have no idea what'll happen to you. I can't even begin to imagine your life after this. You've turned to everyone I have built so much trust with against me. Well, hold on now. I'm sure it will still have caught some of your bosses and co-workers' attention, seeing you get married right after a divorce. But whatever you show them, I'm sure they won't trust you over me. Think what you want to. I know that you're already beyond saving at this point. I am so happy right now. I asked your boss to keep me in the loop on what happens to you next. Good luck. If I get fired, what am I going to do? I don't think he'll do anything like that to you. 
Huh? He noticed that you will need to be able to pay me back for all of the savings that you spent, as well as for the settlements. So he said he won't fire you, that you can earn money just for me. That, in other words, means... Right. You'll be stuck working at a place where everyone will look down on you. But since you need the money, you'll have nowhere else to go. That'll be hell. I'm finished. I just got an email from my work. I have been demoted. I will need to do all low-level tasks within the company and will stay there until further notice. I have never heard of a position like this. Also, I will be relocated to working at an office out in the middle of nowhere. At least your boss was nice enough to keep you around, right? That's the least of my worries now. And what about Deborah? It looks like the same thing will happen to her because of this. Oh my. <laughs> Why did my boss think he could do this to me? Do you not remember? Before I married you, I was working for a small firm that worked with your company. And I went to a human resource training course at your company. During that time, I became friends with your HR rep. And from there, we followed each other a lot on social media. One day, she messaged me and asked how I was doing. At that point, I updated her on all the cheating you had done within the company. And she asked for the photos to show to your bosses. Once they heard about this, they contacted me and made sure that I would be okay. And then all of this is really going to happen. On top of that, I also made sure to tell your parents. You contacted my parents as well? I just made sure to mail them copies of the divorce papers, proof of you having an affair, and all of the text messages between us. They seem to have always cared about how I was doing. So when they heard about this, they were devastated. They apologized to me for having to put up with their awful son. But even with their apologies, I have not had the slightest want or need to forgive you for what you did to me. But my parents... They said they won't be paying for you guys' wedding anymore. And that they don't want anything to do with their cheating son. It sounds to me like they disowned you. They can't do that. Well, help on with your long-distance relationship while you're moved out to the middle of nowhere. I'll leave all the rest to my lawyer. So, I look forward to seeing you if you can avoid going to prison or not. Ha ha! For the past few weeks, I've been staying at my parents' house, trying to unwind and relieve my stress. While I was taking it easy, my parents suggested going on a short trip together. We packed our clothes and headed to the Bahamas for a family vacation. During this time, it appears that my ex took the opportunity to carefully listen to everything the lawyer had advised him. Fortunately, he managed to gather the money I had requested from him. Although he had been working on demanding tasks in the countryside, it seems that work has slowed down, and now he spends his days idling away in the office. As for his long-distance relationship with Deborah, she decided to betray him by getting involved with a wealthier man. It seems that the consequences of how we treat others eventually catch up with us. To be honest, I don't really care about their situation, so I see no need to inform him about what's happening with her. Once some more time has passed, I will start actively looking for a job to regain my independence and move out of my parents' house again.